What up? This is Rama Screen at another awesome press junket, and I'm here for the movie The Divide that's coming out in select theaters November 9th. So go check that out. And I'm here with the director and the lead actor of the film, the legendary Barry King. How you doing, sir? <laughs> thank you, Roman. It's nice to talk to you. And thank you. I don't know about legendary. That's a little far flung, but uh, I'll take it. Thank you. I always love the. I always love talking to a person who's been in this business, you know, for quite a while, and you have. Um, so let me, let me ask you this. Uh, so after all these years, what made you decide? Okay, now I want to make my feature directorial debut. Well. I've been thinking about this for a long, long time, but I know myself pretty well now. I'm an old guy. I'm 70, and I know that I'm slow, and I knew that I needed to take a long time to really amass the knowledge, the information, just in observing. I've directed a bunch of theater. I directed uh, one episode of the series Riptide that I did. was planning to do more the next season, but we got canceled, as every show does eventually. Um, so I always knew I wanted to direct a feature, but I wanted to wait until I really felt prepared to do it. And uh, that's how long it took me. <laughs> I'm <Wow>. slow. <laughs> so what is it about uh, Jana's script that made you say, this is what I want for my feature director debut? Well, Jana and I worked together on that. We evolved the whole thing from the ground up together. Okay. She was doing an interview with me, oh boy, probably seven years ago, maybe six or seven years ago, I think, um, on, for a magazine, a, a school magazine of a school that I went to. So she was interviewing interesting alumni from the school, people that she thought would be interesting to the school. And we had so much fun doing that together that we thought, let's do something else together because we just had a great time. And she did a great job too. She's the only time I've ever been accurately quoted in print in my life, I think, was with Janet. You know, she actually heard what I said, wrote it down, and 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 put it in the article. So um, we said, what can we do? And she said, what have you always wanted to do? And I said, I want to someday direct my own film. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, let's, let's do it. Let's write it. So we started doing it. But of course, for the first at least year, we were just kind of messing around, seeing if we could do something. Uh, and then we started to get serious. And finally, we said, you know what? Let's really do this. So it evolved from, she said, what are the parameters of, you know, a film that you'd want to do? And I said, I want it to be a Western. I want it to be something I could shoot on my own land because I have a cattle ranch up north. Um, I want it to be a period film of some period, any period at all, as long as it's not today, mm -hmm. just because it's more interesting, I think. And I said, I want it to be about redemption, that theme. I mean, there's only a few themes and that's a that's the one I always respond to. And I want it to be about fathers and daughters. And other than that, I didn't give her much. And she evolved the story. She found the bones of the story. One day she was driving somewhere. She said it just kind of came to her, this idea, to tie it to Alzheimer's, dementia. Mm -hmm. She was experiencing that herself with a, a, a grandmother in her family. So she knew quite a lot of what that looked like. And like so many people, you know, it's so prevalent these days, at least in the U.S., so much of it, uh, and I'm not clear why. I don't know that anybody can explain why. It might be just because we live long enough to have that show up. You know, it might be that today they've solved so many other problems that that's the next big problem. But it's sure everywhere you look, Alzheimer's, and no cure, no solutions. So Alzheimer's came into the story, and she thought, what if somebody who's experiencing that the only thing they don't forget is this terrible tragedy in their life. And that was the bones of it. And then she started putting it together. She talked to me. And we started working from there and started writing. Uh, we, we were going to write it together where she'd write a scene, I'd write a scene. We we're going to split it up as a possible way of working together. And very quickly it became evident that I couldn't do it. <laughs> she could, but I couldn't. I was no good at all. My role became the role of the guy who's read thousands of scripts and said mainly what I said to her, of course, because she'd never written a screenplay before, mainly what I said to her is cut it, cut, less, 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 less. That's the main contribution I had to it is instead of a paragraph, how about a sentence? Instead of a sentence, how about two words? Instead of two words, how about nothing, no words, just a look, you know? I mean, that's that's what I've learned to love in film is tremendous economy. I love that collaboration. Thank you for sharing that. I want to ask also, because I saw the film, loved it. Um, 
the aspect that's beautiful about it, of course, I want to ask, what's the decision behind it being black and white? Because I love black and white movies. You know, it adds to the mystery, the things that you can't see, you know, in the, you know, because there's a darkness part of it, you know, instead of colors. Well, what's the creative decision behind that? Well, I'm just, I'm with you. I do too. All my life, I love black and white films. The moment a film is black and white, it's got me already, you know, already I want to watch it. If it's good black and white, if it's well done. And uh, if it's if it's somebody sh using black and white that understands the qualities of that that make it interesting, as you say, for example, the darks and what's hiding in the darks, mm -hmm. and and the contrast between the two, the depth of it, and uh, some of my favorite films, forever, all my life have been black and white. Most recently, one of the greatest films ever made, in my opinion, was a Polish film called Ida, mm -hmm. I D A. We the U S. We'd call that Ida, but they pronounce it Ida. God, that's such a superb film. But lots of examples. Paper Moon is, you know, um, HUD is one of the, probably the film more than any other that I was thinking of when we evolved this film is Paul Newman and HUD. Uh, but so many wonderful black and white films like Schindler's List, you know. The, it just, it, John Ford, the great film director, Western director, said black and white photography is real photography. And I think he's right. It's just, you lose so much with color. I mean, you know, a lot of people would disagree. That's fine. I I love a black and white film. So it was never going to be anything but a black and white film. Right. And, uh, you know, no matter what, I was going to fight to the death for it to be black and white. I want to ask you, I don't know, like a bird's eye view kind of question here. Uh, Western, I love the genre, but it's few far between these days. Last I remember was, I think, The Sisters Brothers and Hostiles last year. Uh, what's your take on that? Is there, why, why does the, there, is there no more attraction to Western in the audience today? I think the reason, and I didn't think of this. A producer once said this to me. I was talking about how much I love Westerns. I grew up loving Westerns. I always wanted to do Westerns and never could get one. Um, cause I was, when I was younger, I was pretty and not handsome. I was actually pretty. And I, I've solved that problem now <laughs> successfully <laughs> by getting old and grizzled. But when I was younger, they just wouldn't cast me. And I really couldn't blame them, frankly. And that's the problem with Westerns. Who are you going to cast? Mm. Who's out there? You know, I don't want to knock any actors that are current out there, but I just, they're very, you know, about the only guy who's not an old man now that I think can carry a Western is Josh Brolin. Mm -hmm. He's the only one who has the, the, the weight, the, the, not physical weight, of course, the, the, the character weight to carry a Western. I mean, John Wayne, when he was an old fat man, was still so powerful in that you could believe that he could do the stuff he was pretending to do on film. Mm. Uh, and certainly when he was younger, you always believed in lots. There's Sam Elliott right now and Clint Eastwood, but they're, you know, they're older. I mean, like me, that, that you, they can't play those parts. That's the problem, I think. Everybody says, oh, Westerns are, you know, not current and, uh, and nobody likes them. But the truth is people love a good movie. It doesn't matter, really, if it's a Western or anything else. If you make a good movie, people will love it. So I, I think that's the, the main problem with Western. There's just nobody out there to care. You can tell when you watch somebody get on a horse. You know, you watch the old Westerns from the 30s and 40s when they really did it right, some of the great ones. And, you know, uh, Shane, just to pick an example, but there's so many examples of that. Um, and you watch those guys get on their horse. And it's really specific. A, a real horseman grabs the mane of the horse or his neck, with his left hand with the reins in it and he grabs the pommel with his right hand and he gets on his horse. I mean, I got a cattle ranch. I know how you mount a horse, right? A cat, uh, uh, an actor who's pretending to be a Western guy grabs the pommel with his left hand and the cantle, the rear of the saddle with his right. When you do that, you're pulling the horse off balance. When you do it the first way, you're pulling the saddle back, and it's stiff. So it's perfectly easy for the horse to withstand that stiffness coming back on his rump. But you pull the saddle sideways, and he's being thrown off balance and bouncing. So it's a very specific thing. So you watch modern westerns, and everybody gets on the wrong way. You know, and you think, you know, it's, I mean, it, it, nobody's watching saying that, but that's the problem. Is there's nobody out there that that can pull those off, I think.
Well, I will always be forever a fan of Western. So <laughs> now um, the cast, Brian, Sarah, uh, they're all fantastic in this film. Uh, can you talk a bit about casting them? And also, um, I know you have ranch background, like you said, ranching background. Did you did you specifically find actors for this film that have you know maybe you can ride a horse? Or is that a requirement for them? Or well, no, it wasn't because. Um, Getting good actors is it was a requirement. Getting really, really good, skillful actors. Everybody in Hollywood uses the word talent. It doesn't mean anything. What are they talking about? Mm -hmm. Skillful, experienced, uh, people who knew what they were doing. And I'm so lucky with Brian and Sarah and also Luke Colombero, who plays the young boy, and Levi Christ, who's a gold, uh, uh, Emmy, uh, Tony Award winning actor. On I mean, all those actors are superb actors. And... Uh, that was the requirement, but we did do a lot of work on riding so that they'd have that experience. So we we trained them. I mean, if you know, like I say, everybody in the in the movie gets on a horse correctly. They know how, except for me. And the reason I don't is very specific. There's one scene toward the end when when we sort of chase the guys off that were had come. You know, I don't want to talk about the story, but I intentionally got on poorly because I'm old and creaky and I can't, and I say, oh boys, I'm getting too old for this, you know, and I hated to do it because I know how to get on a horse, but, but I felt it was necessary, important that Sam not be able to mount his, his own horse properly. He's too old to do it. It gets tough when you get old. I, I, uh, I you. yeah, <laughs> I, I gotta ask you this, um, for my fans who are aspiring filmmakers, now having gone through the experience of this feature directorial debut of yours, um, can you talk a bit about the challenges and the joys of independently making this movie and what you're gonna try to tweak for next project probably as a director? Well, I'm not thinking about the next project at all. All I care about these days is this movie and I really mean that. Unlike the way I've always been in my career and any other actor I know, it's not about the next thing for me these days. I really want people to see this film. I'm not interested in the money side of it. I want people to see it because uh, I'm really happy with it and proud of it. But uh, it was this has been the most fun thing I've ever been part of in show business in 50 years of doing this. The most satisfying thing. I'm happy happier with the result than anything else I've ever done. Jan and I just look at each other in astonishment and say, we actually made the movie we meant to make. That never feels that way. All, I don't know, I've been in, IMDb says I've been in like 120 things or something. There's nothing back there with one exception, a movie called A Different Story, yeah. which was made in the late 70s. That's the only exception of something that, that, that I really loved, like I love this movie. So I'm just trying to get people to, to notice it. Well, Barry, Sam Kincaid is a brilliant character. This is a fantastic movie. Thank you so much for sharing them with us. And go check it out November 9th, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so